Welcome back to uh, Biological Anthropology Lab. This is David Leitner. I'm your instructor for the semester. And this little video is just going to introduce you to the class and um, how to use uh, Canvas with this class. It's entirely on Canvas, so that's kind of important. Um, so without further ado, let me just get started with the tour. So this is the home page. This is what you're going to see when you go into Canvas and you click on the class link in your dashboard. It should bring you here. Uh, we've got a beautiful piece of incised ochre here that is one of the oldest, actually maybe the oldest uh, work of, if you want to call it art, but certainly sort of human manufactured object that we've um, got other than stone tools. It's got these beautiful designs in it and it's um uh somewhere um uh, around 70 to 100,000 years at least um so that's that's kind of old um i've got a little bit about what biological anthropology is i've got my contact information here for you should you need it uh, and the most important thing for you on this homepage is the very first thing you want to do is go to the student orientation. And that is right here. And that will take you to a page that, if you don't already know how to use it, uh, will teach you how to use Canvas. Uh, this short video shows you how. And even if you have used Canvas before, don't worry. There's other useful stuff on here, too. Links for getting help with Canvas. Uh... 24-hour phone number here. Uh, since if we're at Folsom Lake College, you use that phone number. Uh, if you're another college, use the use the appropriate phone number. And then finally, uh, for non-Canvas related IT help, you've got the help desk here, student help desk. You also have information on how to download and install the Canvas app on your Android or Apple device, iOS device. And on the next page, this is how we navigate through, we just click the next button. Some quick notes on how I use Canvas. In short, I'm doing everything on Canvas. Uh, quick note about communication on Canvas. Um, I am, this semester I'm teaching at four different schools. Um, some semesters I teach at five. And... Uh, that's a lot of email addresses to keep track of, and the chance if you email my FLC email address, I will probably get it, but it's going to be competing with a whole bunch of other email that I get. Whereas if you contact me through the inbox, as you see here on Canvas, um, you can just make a message like that and email it to me uh, through there. And I will get that the next time I log into Canvas. So it's much more likely I'm going to see your messages if you message me through Canvas. So that's my preference. Obviously, I will answer them if I see them in my email too. But but you've got a better chance of getting a hold of me this way. Um, let's see here. Let's go back. Um, the other thing about it too, um, I've got uh, a phone number that you saw on the front page there. I also explained it in the introductory module. But um, I am available for texting most of the time. That's if you've got a quick question, uh, something that's not going to take long to answer, and it's something you've looked for the answer for and you couldn't find it on the website or in the syllabus, then um, go ahead and text me. I usually get back to that pretty quickly. For all communication, I try and get back within 48 hours. Usually it's much faster than that, but um, on the outside, it's going to be about 48 hours. Okay. Um, right, so the next button takes us to the syllabus page. Now, the nice thing here is any you can get to the syllabus from anywhere in Canvas. You just click the syllabus link on the side here, and that shows you our textbook. It's got a link to our paper syllabus here, or our PDF in this case, and you can view it in the window here if you want, or you can, oops, have to move that real quick. Or you can uh, um, download it if you prefer that. Uh, this is the picture of the cover of our textbook. It's a lab manual, which means there are exercises in it that we're going to be working on. Uh, we're going to be doing those 
uh, in groups. I've already added you to groups. Uh, some of you have requested particular sort of groupings. That's fine with me. Just let me know as soon as possible. I'd like to have the group sort of solidified by the end of this week. Um, make sure when you are getting your textbook that you use the ISBN number. And, and if you don't, even if you do use the ISBN number, make sure you get the second edition. The difference between the second and the first edition is pretty significant. So uh, I want to make sure you get the correct edition. Uh, you won't be able to keep up with us if you have the wrong edition. Um, let's see. The other neat thing about the syllabus is it's got due dates for all your assignments in here. You see more on here because I see more. This is the student view. And here you go. It's got the um, full list of assignments. You're going to notice some grades groups here, too. There are actually three grade groups that we worry about here. There's the group participation. I'll get to that a little bit later concept review questions, and lab exercises. There's a little bit of extra credit right at the beginning here. That's if you turn in your lab discussion, which you have to do to stay in the class anyways. Uh, I also give you a few extra points for that. It's 1% of your grade. That's the difference between, you know, if you're on the cusp of one grade or another, that's going to bump you up to the next one. So worth, worth doing that. Uh, there are a couple of empty categories here you don't need to worry about. Critical thinking questions, we're not doing that. Imported assignments, that's that's nothing. That's just garbage. So don't worry about those two. Uh, all right, so we go back to the home page, and the last of these buttons is, just like with the syllabus button, you can either click on this from the home page, or you can see there's a modules button here on the side. And this takes you to the modules. Now you'll see right now my modules in uh, student view are um, blocked, right? So you can see the first couple. I haven't opened up uh, anything past lab one right now. These are blocked because, as you'll notice, as it says right here, prerequisites, student orientation, resources, and support. Do this first. Well, that's this module right up here. So what that means is you can... You see on here, underneath Canvas Orientation, it says View, and Canvas in this class, it says View. That means in order to complete that module, we have to view both of those pages. I'm going to do that right now, actually. So, boop, we were just there, and boop, we were just there. And now it should let us into, bump, look at that. It's opened up the introductory module now. Same thing with the introductory. You can see most of these, I just need you to view them. A couple things, you need to submit the introductory discussion assignment, and there's an introductory module quiz. It's just a quiz on the information I provide in that module. You can take it as many times as you like, but to progress on, you have to pass with at least 8 out of 10 correct answers. There aren't that many questions, so don't worry about it. Um, you will get it eventually. So let's make sure we're all on board with the policies, procedures, etc. Um, the most important things, most of this stuff recapitulates what's in or repeats what's in the uh, syllabus, but there's also some extra stuff as well. Um, you've got the grades uh, that I already talked about. Um, something very important here, some advice on converting and uploading uh, image files into Canvas. Uh, for the lab assignments, you're going to be scanning your uh, your paper assignment and then uploading that file onto Canvas. So this has some suggestions on how to do that. I'll only It will only take a JPEG or a PDF format. Uh, and if you don't know what those are, this will sort of explain some of that for you. Um, the other thing is the resources for students. Uh, which has, if you need any help, there's a lot of reading and a lot of writing going on in this class. So if you need any help, you can find it at the library, the writing center, and there is also tutoring available. I don't know if we have subject-specific tutoring available this semester or not, uh, but I know there's writing, tutoring, that, and, and, and support available. If you think uh, you may be struggling in the class because of a... It, a disability of some sort, you're having trouble accessing things. That can be physical, it can be um, uh, uh, intellectual, it can be um, uh, a learning disability, it can be any kind. 
Um, if you feel like you're uh, having trouble because of that, go see the DSPS. Um, the Disabled Students Office here has... Um, they can get you accommodations. They can basically talk to you, find out what your needs are, write me a letter telling me how I can help you uh, best, as well as, and here's the important thing, because you and I could just talk and we could come up with some accommodations, but if you go to them first, they might have other things that they can offer you that will help beyond what I can do. So make sure you go talk to them, even if you don't know if you, if you've ever suspected you might have um, a disability, uh, whether it's has to do with executive function like ADHD or um, or um, uh, autism or any number of other um, disabilities. Uh, talk to them about it. They know a lot about this stuff. Um, I'm saying this as somebody with a learning disability, so um, that I left unmanaged for a long time in school and suffered for it. And I never, I didn't need to. I didn't need to. It was ridiculous. When I finally like got the help I needed, it made all the difference in the world. Same thing with stress and health. Um, in this case, there are services you've already paid for that you're probably not using. Uh, you know, the health center has information about nutrition, uh, weight loss, if that's what you're interested in, exercise, if that's what you're interested in, um, and just general health in, uh, at all vaccination, boom, they're going to get you, whether it's flu or COVID, that's, you know, to look there for, for information on that. Um, by the way, I am 100% for the vaccinations. You guys need to be doing it. And if you're meeting in person, even if you're vaccinated, unless you live together, wear masks. It It is for the good of everybody else around you, not for you, okay? Uh, cause even if you're vaccinated, you could, st there's still a small chance you could be carrying the virus with you and spreading it to other people. So it's always good to take care of other people by wearing that mask for them. Um, uh, stress and health. So, um, the other thing is, uh, there is mental health support here and mental health gets, a uh, everybody gets scared when we start talking about mental health. It's not a big deal. Um, it's a big deal for the people suffering from it, but it is not a, shouldn't be a stigma attached to it. I have mental health issues. I have been treated for depression and for anxiety in the past. Um, and, um, I left those untreated for a long time and didn't need to, um, you have paid for some counseling support through the school already. They, you paid for this support. So whether you're dealing with, um, you're living with someone or, or you yourself are living with substance abuse, uh, eating disorders, um, uh, um, uh, domestic violence, any of these things. Uh, but also, if you're just feeling overwhelmed, we're all of us. I, I was a community college student, too. All of us, as community college students, are carrying, uh, we're wearing a lot more hats than most college students do. Uh, you know, we've got, a lot of us have family obligations, we've got work obligations, we've got, you know, we're trying to figure out how to pay for all of this. Uh, and having to make big decisions about does it make more sense to continue school this semester? Or does it make more sense to try and make some money? These are tough things. This is not easy. And we haven't built a system that's, that's frankly, um, good for stress and health, uh, in terms of helping you complete. This mental health support is for feeling overwhelmed as well. If you are feeling overwhelmed with stuff, if you feel like, everybody else is capable and you're not for some reason and you feel just like you feel bad about it you feel like crap you feel like you're failing go talk to them that's what they're there for nine times out of ten you're wrong <laughs> you're dealing with stuff everybody else is but going and talking to them will help and if there are more serious issues like you you are suffering from a depressive episode or anxiety or something like that they can help guide you to finding resources to deal with that. Um, basically, my message to you guys is get help. Don't suffer unnecessarily. There's nothing noble about it. Uh, I grew up 
in a culture like that where you just tough stuff out and you don't burden other people with your problems. And believe me, that was the wrong thing uh, and the wrong way to go about life, at least for me, uh, when I finally got help. So you've already paid for this, so you might as well use it. Don't let it go to waste. Okay, um, anyways, then let's scroll back out here to the body. Um, uh, you've already made it to the introduction lecture, so I probably didn't need to introduce all this for you, but um, there's another resource here, which is how to read. I'm not going to go into it deeply. I've got several different sets of advice. Skim them. If they're helpful, great. If they're not, don't worry about it. It's just there to kind of give you different perspectives on how to read at the college level. You may think you already know. Let me tell you, though, if your approach to reading at college level is to start at the beginning and read every word till the end, you're doing it wrong. You're not getting as much out of the reading as you should get. And these are some ways to go about reading that are more efficient and usually more effective as well. Oftentimes they involve taking several increasingly more detailed passes at the text, but this works. This works. Nobody taught me this until I got to grad school. I I was, God, I hated reading. Uh, and then I got to grad school and I just, they were asking us to read hundreds of pages every week and stay up on that. And I just didn't know how I was going to do it. And then somebody said, why are you reading the way you're reading? Uh, and they taught me some tricks. And so I'm trying to share that along with you. Okay. Um, it'll help you not just in school, but later in life, if you end up with a job where you got to read reports or, or policy or legal briefings or whatever, um, you know, this is going to help you. Um, okay. Finally, then, uh, let's see here. I'm going to hop out of student view right now so I can show you the first module. Uh, oh, before the module, we've got the lab schedule here. Click on this. It's just a sort of, it's all the same information that's all over Canvas, but just, it, it doesn't tell you when things are due, but it tells you what week we're doing which lab. That's, that's the main thing. Uh, I've made the first week kind of easy here. We're just doing the introductory portion. The only thing that's due is the introductory discussion and the, um, and the introductory, uh, quiz. Those are the only two things you got to worry about this week. Next week, we start lab one. That gives us a chance to get settled into our labs, into our lab groups, do all of that. Otherwise, we're doing, most of the time, we're doing one lab a week. Come the uh, first two weeks of November, we're going to accelerate a little bit. We're going to be doing two labs, but we're not going to be doing as many exercises. So that'll sort of even that out. Uh, and then... Uh, we're actually going for the final two, we're going to, for the final lab, we're going to take two weeks for that one, just because I've got a lot more stuff. It's my favorite topic, and we're going to, I'm going to share a lot more with you. Um, and there is no final, um, I do take late assignments, don't make a habit of it, and all late assignments have to be in by Monday of finals week. That's the beginning of finals week. Why? because they don't give us a lot of time to get the grades in, and I need time to catch that stuff up if, uh, if I'm going to get stuff in on time. Uh, the thing about late submissions, if you've missed a deadline, I will accept it. There's not a penalty of any kind, uh, just I may take a while to actually get to it, because it's going to be the last on my priority after people who got stuff in on time. Um... Right, and then there's a little more information at the end here about days to drop, uh, last day you can withdraw with a W, pass no pass deadlines, that sort of stuff. Okay, so let's get into lab one, and here we go. You're going to see uh, when you get into lab one, there is this quick introduction. It's going to tell you a little bit about what we're looking at in this, uh, in this chapter, plus, uh, what you're expected to learn and what you're expected to do. Uh, that's pretty simple. Uh, for the first two labs, I've provided the, the PDF version of the, um, of the lab manual for you. 
that is so that um, if you have any trouble or any delays with like financial aid or anything, it gives you a little a couple extra weeks to um, get your book uh, for yourself. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Next thing. So that's not going to be every lab. It's just going to be these first two labs I provide that PDF for. Uh, the next thing are lectures. Um, these are topics that tie into the lab. Uh, these are actually taken from my uh, from some of the lectures I've done for my um, regular bioanth um, uh, class, not the lab class, uh, and uh, as well as some extra stuff. These three movies tie in with this one. So watch this one first, and it'll tell you to pause at certain points and watch certain ones of these. Uh, they're, see, it's interactive. <laughs> Uh, I usually do it as a slideshow and show the stuff in class, but this was the only way I could figure out how to do that uh, and make it work. Additional material. You don't have to watch this stuff. The lectures I am expecting you to watch. This stuff, not so much, but it's informational. It may help clarify some things. This week, it's mostly just stuff about the four fields of anthropology and careers in anthropology. What do anthropologists actually do? It might surprise you the wide number of things we actually do and the wide number of places we work. Uh, everywhere from the tech industry to working on policy and we're, or with nonprofits, working in law enforcement. It, it, there are lots of places you find anthropologists. So this is just to kind of give you a broader scope of that. This is a nice little look at what deep time is because one of the crazy things about evolution, which is largely what we're studying this semester, is that the time scales of evolution are immense and unimaginable for most of us uh, until we have it illustrated. And this is a great illustration of the Earth's history and our place in it. Uh, very entertaining. Highly recommend you watch it. Uh, sometimes I'll have little extra pages that touch on specific topics that might be helpful. Students often struggle with this idea of a testable hypothesis. What does testable mean? This is a little explainer from Anne-Marie Helmenstein, uh, um, who has written a great little piece on Thought Co. Uh, that I like. It's brief, uh, it's very illustrative, and might help clarify that concept for you. Uh, there's a flashcards chapter here, so uh, if you just go straight to the page, it'll look like this. You hit that, it'll open a separate page. And this is the publisher's uh, flashcard stuff. You can either have the term and then flip to get the definition, or you can have the definition, there we go, definition first and flip to see the term. Either way, you can shuffle the cards, uh, you can reload them to put them back in order, you can download them or print them, however you want to do it, it's useful. Finally, we've got the assignments. So here we've got concept review questions. These, the concept review assignments are to be done individually. Uh, you do them after you've read the chapter. Uh, it's just to sort of be like, okay, these were the main points of the chapter. Check in, make sure you, um, you uh, um, get it right. Uh, let's see here. Um, and then the group submission. As a group, you guys are going to meet at least once a week. Um, you know, expect at least 30 minutes, probably more. Uh, but find them, and it doesn't have to all be at once. You can split that up over the week if you need to. But agree on times when you guys can get together over Zoom or Skype. Or if phone works better, that's a little harder, but that could work. Um, if you live together, yeah, get together in person, that's fine. Um, I'm not expecting anybody to put themselves at risk for infection or being around people they don't know, so don't, don't stress about that. Um, the, the procedures for labs are pretty simple. Okay, so you start up here, and everybody does work on the lab. The leader, however, will be responsible for, you need, guys need to appoint a group leader, that person's responsible for seeing that stuff gets uploaded to the assignment. Um, 
the first thing you'll notice here is it tells you which lab exercises to do. There are actually six exercises in lab one. I only want you doing one through five. Uh, there are some special instructions for exercise five because since we're not, this book was written for it a lab space. We're not in a lab space, so in this case, I can't provide you with objects for you all to measure. And instead, what I've done is given you a document you can print out that has images of objects and a centimeter ruler that may or may not be to scale. Doesn't matter. It's to the same scale as the image, and that's all that matters. So you guys will be measuring those uh, instead. So that so anytime there's an exception like that or something I've adapted to make this doable online, um, it'll be noted here in special instructions. The general instructions are going to be more or less the same every time. Uh, assign a group leader. Uh, you don't have to do it every time. You can just assign a group leader once. Uh, figure out when you guys are going to meet. Uh, divide the work up. That is fine. If you guys want to divide the work up and each do a separate chunk, make sure when you come back together, you explain the chunks to each other. Don't just copy down. It's fine if you do copy down, but make sure you're explaining to each other because um, teaching will help you. Teaching what you've learned to someone else will help cement it in your brain. It's actually another way of learning is to teach. Um, I can't tell you how much I, my first semester of teaching uh, uh, intro courses, uh, I hadn't taken an intro course in 12 years and I had forgotten how much I had forgotten. I was learning stuff that I actually didn't ever remember learning because, you know, uh, teaching is another way of learning. Um, okay, so uh, each one teach one. Divide the work up, uh, meet as a group, uh, complete uh, the ex all the exercises in the lab. Please try, do your, I know we don't teach handwriting anymore, but do your best to uh, print neatly uh, so that I can I can uh, read it, um, especially if you're the group leader, because yours is the one I'm going to um, grade. Um, scan or photograph your pages, send it to your group leader, your group leader then, and make sure you convert it into either a JPEG or a PDF. Uh, <clears throat> double check your work before you send it. Uh, and then your group leader will do these things where they will, this is just instructions for them on how to upload the files. That's that. If uh, I've put the little instructions for um, how to, both from Canvas and an article from How To Geek on how to convert files and that sort of thing, I do need to, you to know that um, this How To Geek article suggests a particular piece of software that's free. Um, I make no, and these are, I'm not endorsing that software. Always download stuff off the internet at your own risk. Uh, I can say I haven't had problems with it before, but that doesn't mean I'm guaranteeing that there are no problems. So, uh, but just, uh, just be aware of that. Um, yeah, and that's the, the lab assignment. I'm sure there are going to be questions for that. We'll have time to sort of answer those. Don't worry. Uh, and if I get the same question over and over, I'll, I'll probably put out an announcement to clarify it. Okay. Um, next, this is to be done individually as well. It's group peer assessment. It's done as a quiz. Uh, and what you need to do is basically it's some questions about each of your, uh, each of the group members, including yourself and your assessment of how you guys work together. Um, who was responsible for what? Did people fulfill their responsibilities? Um, what Was it a good experience? What kind of grade would you give each other just based on like how well you work together? That sort of thing. Um, this will not determine your participation grade, uh, but it will inform my grade of that. Okay, And I'm always, if I get accounts that are very, very different or that somebody's really like dropped the ball uh, um, I'm not going to tank people without talking to them first. Okay. So, uh, this is part of your, um, of your, uh, peer assessment grade. Uh, by turning this in, you get five points towards that grade anyways, that it's not, it doesn't matter. You're not getting questions right or wrong. Uh, but, uh, then this last hand thing here is the, uh, 
lab one participation grade you don't have to do anything for this i will enter this grade myself based on what i read in the group assessment and that's it that is how you work through the uh the labs that's going to be pretty much the same pattern every week I may have a few sort of extra things to sort of throw in with the lab that you guys can work on, like coloring sheets and that sort of stuff. But, um, you know, honestly, uh, the way I grade the labs is basically we start at 100%. Uh, for every wrong answer, I subtract one. That's it. That's it. Uh, sometimes I count multiple answers as one rather than sort of every single one. It just depends on, on the... Uh, the questions that are asked and that's but it'll be clear when i grade what what was uh what was deducted and what wasn't so uh and as always i am open to conversations um office hours normally you will go to tech connect zoom but as you can see right now i am having trouble connecting to tech connect zoom uh so in the meantime i believe i sent uh a um, sent you guys a, uh, link for office hours. If I did not actually send that email, please remind me. Office hours are on Fridays. I think it's 1130 to 1230. It says in the syllabus. Um, but, uh, um, I can also meet people individually at other times if that doesn't ever work for you. I, I can be very flexible. Well, relatively flexible. Um, right. Well, that does it for us. This is, I'm looking forward to a great, uh, semester. Anthropology is a really broad subject and biological anthropology is one of my favorite parts of it because it's really the story of how we came to be. How, how did we get here? Uh, and this long story of life on earth that sort of leads to us, uh, which is great. And the story of evolution itself, which is just one of the most sort of fascinating forces in the universe. So, uh, I will preface by saying, uh, uh, if you, if you are a skeptic of evolution, uh, if you have other explanations that you believe are more important, uh, I'm not going to grade you down for that. Obviously, I disagree with you, but, um, I'm not going to grade you down for it. But keep in mind, my job here is not to grade you on your, ability to tell me what's wrong with evolution, but your ability to explain to me how scientists think about evolution and think about human origins. That is my job. Um, you should be able to do that, whether you believe that evolution is the answer or not. Um, that's the only point of this class. Uh, you don't have to believe it. I don't care if you walk out of here believing it or not. That is up to you. Uh, I do care that you have an accurate knowledge of the way scientists think about evolution and the way we use it to explain uh, uh, um, the origins of life, uh, particularly human life. Um, so, uh, like I say, I don't want to sort of exclude anyone, uh, but I also am very need to be very clear. I'm teaching a class on evolution. That's what we're learning. Um, right. With that said, I was about to say if there aren't any questions, but you can't ask me a question right now. You know what? If you want to ask me a question, again, just contact me on Canvas, and I'm more than happy to engage in it. Come to office hours, whatever you'd like. Um, that said, I'm looking forward to a great semester. Hope you all are doing well. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And uh, I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.